Helping Seniors Television, all about improving quality of life for seniors. If you're a senior, know a senior, or plan to be a senior, then this show is for you. It's all about helping you develop your own aging plan so you can age actively and with dignity. Helping Seniors Television, from the Helping Seniors Network of Information, Education, and Resources. I'm Kerry Fink with Helping Seniors of Brevard. It's such a pleasure to join you today for Helping Seniors Television. I get the privilege of sitting in for our founder and president, Joe Steckler, uh, and uh, to have a really uh, interesting discussion today. We're gonna talk about hearing and the things that you can do to hear like you've always wanted to be able to hear. And uh, I'm so honored to have in the uh, studio with us, John Roberts. John is the founder of the Palm Bay Hearing Aid Center. And thank you, John, for being here today and coming in to talk to us about the advances. I guess uh, we were talking a little bit before the camera was rolling. There are some incredible advances and things that are now available to help you as you uh, seek to get the best hearing that you can. So welcome to the show. Thank you, Kerry. So we were talking before the show that you were originally from Michigan, but you came to, uh, you came to Florida many years ago and the climate agrees with you. Yes, it does. <laughs> it's much better than the snow. <laughs> that's what that's what we were talking about, uh, having experience up north. And I think that's why a lot of people from up north are in Florida. But I want to talk a little bit with you today about um, the topic of hearing aids. And, and I was asking you before the show, I said it must be that people are often reluctant to talk about the need for hearing aids. Is, is it usually somebody in the family that presses them and says, listen, you need to go check this out? Or how does it start when people come in, in for, for an evaluation? Yes, generally it's a family member that will um, begin the discussion about hearing loss uh, or especially comment on the television being too loud yep. or they feel like they're being ignored at times. So at what point would you say to somebody that says, yeah, this could be going on in my household, when would be the appropriate time you would tell them they should call and make an appointment and come in for an evaluation? Uh, quite often the person that has a hearing loss will experience some type of an event, maybe at a family gathering mm -hmm. or around uh, people that they, they might uh, care for or uh, church or socially, uh, but they may be embarrassed or have right. a frustrating event that takes place. And they may express that to a loved one. And that, that generally is a time that they may begin to consider coming in to get their hearing tested. I guess it's probably <clears> something <throat> that there, there may be a stigma or people are a little bit embarrassed to admit they have an issue. Well, you know, uh, there is a stigma associated with hearing loss. Um, there's always a caricature on television or in popular entertainment about people that right. can't hear. They, hey, what'd you say? Yeah. Uh, they're made fun of. And uh, that may, may be the beginning of the um, stigma that's associated with hearing loss. And that causes people to be in denial right. about their own problem. That's what I was going to ask. Is the denial factor a big one? Because somebody says, no, no, I, I hear what you're saying. I can turn the TV down. I can still hear it. And they go through a lot of that instead of just saying, boy, if we hit the problem, it would be a whole new day. Oh, that's exactly right. People will tend to minimize the problem, mm -hmm. and that may be a defense mechanism. However, it, um, it doesn't just go away, and it gradually but significantly gets worse every, every day or every year. Yeah. No, I would think so. And I was saying, you've been, this, you didn't start this yesterday. You've been doing this for 30 years. You have your board certified in all this. And, and I want you to explain what that means, the process, because I, I always believe experience matters. And when you have that kind of a background, and you've seen this whole industry uh, get more and more technologically supercharged, I mean, you've seen a lot of things over that period of time. Well, yes, uh, the, um, the steps to become board certified involve uh, the num uh, at least five years of uh -huh. practice after you've worked as an apprentice for um, a number of years before you got licensed. But the industry has evolved over the last 30 years uh, tremendously as far as the technology goes right. involving hearing aids. What hasn't changed is the public's perception of hearing aids and hearing loss. There is very little information available about hearing loss. Uh, although it may be the biggest factor in somebody's life that's experiencing it, they really don't have the resources to get information. You know, uh, what, you're, what you're saying is so important, and I just want to take a, a, a moment to actually address that, because 
In the helping seniors world, as you know, one of the things that uh, Joe Steckler has always been committed to is getting information in the hands of seniors. Because what happens for most of us is we run up on a situation that for us is the first time that we run into it. Aging is, after all, on the job training. And so as we discover something, then we find the need to try to research and understand what's going on. And that's why we do the television programs, the radio programs we publish in the Senior Scene magazine, is because we want people to be able to access information that really could make a major difference. I know I'm going to almost like jump to the end of this, but I am sure that when somebody comes in who's probably nervous, maybe a bit embarrassed and, and, and a little bit like, I'm not even sure I need to be here when they walk in, but by the time that you've got them set up with the right thing that's going to help their situation, it must be like a whole brand new, brand new life for them. Yes, it can be a very, um, a, a very surreal experience for somebody that has experienced a gradual decline in their ability to hear and understand the people that they care for. Once we test them, and uh, quite often we're able to actually put hearing aids on them while they're at our office. Oh, wow. Often that is a jaw-dropping and life-changing experience for the person that has a hearing loss. A comment that we often uh, get is that, oh my goodness, I had no idea I wasn't hearing. <clears throat> yeah, I was. The, the analogy that comes to mind is like, I think it was fifth grade when I got glasses, and I remember walking out of the uh, out of the eyeglass store going, wow, there's trees on the leaves. And I, yeah, I imagine it's right, probably yes. an audio equivalent, right? <laughs> yes, it is. Wow. Or, although, sorry, leaves on the trees, not trees on the leaves. I caught that. So, uh, but I wanted to ask you, you know, a lot of times people diagnose uh, things like dementia uh, or they're, they're saying like mom isn't understanding things as well as she used to. Uh, I'm not sure if she's slowing down or what's going on, and I wonder how often you discover that some of that is just related to hearing, that they can't hear what's going on correctly. Well, that's, that's true. Uh, the symptoms of hearing loss uh, parallel the symptoms of dementia. Wow. Um, the, the, um, the symptoms are, are almost identical. There, there is a, a correlation between hearing loss and dementia, uh -huh. uh, besides the fact that, that the symptoms are similar. Um, in 2009, John Hopkins did a study that demonstrated that there is a very statistical uh, correlation between hearing loss and, and dementia, early onset dementia or Alzheimer's. And so if you're able to get the, uh, the auditory issues out of the way, then you're able to kind of separate those issues and figure out what's going on. Well, yeah, that's right. Uh, quite often I, I, I see people that are assumed to have dementia or Alzheimer's, when they simply have a hearing loss. Right. So it makes sense to start with the simple things that you can you can work with first. And I was going to ask you that, because um, there was a note we, we, we said we should talk about a little bit. Hearing, hearing with your brain, cognitive decline linked to untreated hearing loss. And I wanted you to explain a little bit more uh, how, how, we, how, we, how we parse that out. Uh, well, the, uh, the, the, the part about hearing with your brain is simply the way that we do almost everything else, mm -hmm. that the, the body's uh, sending signals up to, up to the brain, and then the, the brain uh, takes the signals and deciphers them or interprets them mm -hmm. as needed. Um, as, the, uh, as the hearing loss may advance or, or get a little bit worse, the brain is not receiving the signals that it needs in order to process speech properly. Okay. And uh, that, that uh, reduction in the ability to understand is often uh, noted by uh, excessive repeating or somebody that uh, seems not to be paying attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was asking you also before the show started, I said, is as we get older, what is it that actually happens to us typically and you were giving an explanation. I said, is it a physical process or is it, a, is it something that in our interpretation of it, but what is it that actually causes us to, as we advance in age, we are likely to say we might need to take a look at some help for hearing. What is it that causes it? Yeah. Well, there is a natural uh, hearing loss, age-related hearing mm -hmm. loss that some of us will experience more than others. There can be a genetic predisposition to have hearing loss. Uh, often medications that we take are, are contributing to a really? hearing loss. Wow. Aspirin or uh, other uh, blood thinning are, are notorious for hearing loss, but uh, there's uh, hundreds of medications that can contribute to it. And uh, noise-induced hearing loss is very common, of course. We live in a noisy world. 
Yeah, I was going to ask that. What about we're kind of we talk a lot about baby boomers, and in this county, folks, we talk about the fact that one in four people in Brevard County is over the age of sixty-five. One in four, and then actually, if you want to use the AARP definition, it's actually one out of two. So we have a lot of uh, a lot of aging going on in Brevard County, and some of that aging is what we call baby boomers. And we all grew up in an era of rock and roll, and you know our parents were always, you need to turn that down, you're going to lose your hearing. How how often, or how is that true? Is that myth, or how do you what do you see in that world? Uh, as far as how uh, rock and roll music may be affecting your hearing, <laughs> 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 well, you know if you're exposed to a lot of uh, intense sound, uh, it's likely that you're going to experience at least a temporary loss in hearing. Uh -huh. um, I would say that uh, for musicians and people that are really exposed to a lot of heavy music, uh, they, may, they, may, they may have a very strong correlation between their, their, the, the, the music and their hearing loss. For most people, like myself, that may have attended a few rock concerts mm -hmm. and had their ears ringing for a day or two afterwards, <laughs> right. uh, that's really not going to cause too many long-term effects. Good. Well, that's good to know. But you were talking about what are some of the symptoms if, if, if you're sitting at home and you're watching this show and you're trying to decipher for yourself, you know, you might be aware of a loved one around you who's telling you you got to turn it on TV. But if you're like considering where you are yourself, what are the things that, that might make us think we should make a make an appointment and come in? If you're what? If you're by yourself? Yeah. Or, or if you're or just you you're hearing what we're talking about thinking, gee, I wonder if this might apply to me personally. Well, you know, I, I get my eyes tested every year. Right. Okay. Most people do, whether they have a vision problem or not. Right. Um, however, very few people will, will come and get a hearing test, although they're free of charge at, at my center and at many other centers like mine. Um, there's no way to self-determine if you may have a slight or a moderate hearing loss. You need to get your, your, your hearing tested. So, and, and you just said a key word. You said there's no charge to, 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 to be able to just check that out? No, that's out? a service that we offer anybody that asks for it. Wow. And what happens if somebody wanders in and they say, listen, I would really like to just see where I'm at on this scale. How, how, what is it? Is it an invasive process? How does that all work? No, we put them in a comfortable sound booth. We, uh -huh. have, we have the large comfortable sound booth at our facility. And we just put a set of headsets on them and, and play a few tones. And within a few minutes, we know if they have a hearing loss. If they do have a hearing loss, we'll do more extensive testing and spend more time with them. But it's very easy to, to see if you may have a, a, a problem. Okay, that's good to know. So, uh, and just, I, I, we're going to hit this again at the end, but how do people get in touch with you guys? Is there a phone number? What's the way, if they're thinking about this, how would they get in touch with you? Well, of course, they can Google hearing aids in, in Palm Bay, and they'll find Palm Bay Hearing Aid Center, or okay. call us at 321-369-9900. Okay, I'll have you say that number. Grab a pencil one more time. 321-369-9900. Uh, and you say, again, they can, they can call, get an appointment, and have their hearing checked for absolutely absolutely free absolutely. and just to understand that. Well, one of the notes that we had written here that we wanted to talk about, um, it's interesting. We do a helping senior survey every year and we ask seniors to rate the top needed uh, things uh, that they would see are their top needs in Brevard County. And you wouldn't be surprised to learn that things like affordable housing and transportation to and from medical appointments is right up there. But one of the things that you might be surprised to learn that always ranks in the top five is that people feel socially isolated as they get older. And so one of the things that um, is interesting about that, that one of the solutions that seniors in Brevard County need is they need more opportunity for interaction. And I, I saw, saw that when we had written on our notes together about keeping social connections as you age and how hearing loss can make you even feel more isolated. And I want to just get your comments and your experiences because you've helped hundreds if not thousands of patients over the years with that. Yes, I have. And social isolation is probably the most detrimental, um, horrible uh, side effect of hearing loss. The thing that makes us human it, it quite often is our interaction with other people, mm -hmm. whether it's family members, friends, or, or people that we may worship with. And as your hearing loss advances, your ability to interact with other people uh, diminishes to the point that um, often people are completely isolated. Yeah. And yet, so that goes right back to what we were talking a few minutes ago. When somebody gets something that's going to make a difference to their hearing, it must be really like a, just an amazing aha moment for them. Yes, it can be an amazing aha moment. 
and life changing at that. So one, also for the other family members that oh, may, yeah. that may be suffering along with the hearing loss. If you have a hearing loss, uh, your whole family has a hearing problem. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> Yeah, and I, I guess it's one of those things, you know, I mean, on TV and things like that, there's a great propensity to make jokes about this, but it's really pretty serious, you know, if you're trying to trying to communicate with somebody on an ongoing basis, it's not only the frustration, but now you point out you have isolation too. That's right. Uh, the isolation is also a factor in, um, in dementia and early onset dementia and Alzheimer's. Uh, that's one of the biggest factors that may contribute to those problems. It's amazing. So one of the things that probably keeps people afraid of this topic is the cost of hearing aids. Is it, is, this is, this is uh, probably a, a topic that you guys run into a lot as you talk to folks and say, listen, here's what's going on. Let's start talking about potential solutions. So my question is, how do you explain to people generally cost of hearing aids and how that works with insurance or doesn't work with insurance? The insurance is beginning to participate more and more every year. Um, the, the cost of hearing aids is generally uh, a matter of uh, how, much, uh, how much value the hearing aids have. There's only six manufacturers that produce approximately 90% of all hearing aids. And they're the ones that, that spend all the money for research and development and develop the new uh, digital uh, uh, hearing, aid, hearing aid solutions and um, some of the um, other uh, options that we're now using is uh, like being able to uh, connect your hearing device to your, your iPhone. But you can get um, hearing aids that don't have all of the advancements that you can possibly think of at a reduced cost. And you should look at your insurance and call your insurance company and see if they do participate. Quite often we find that people that didn't know they had benefits may have them. But when you come into our office, we'll sit down and, and try to figure out what your situation is and whether or not we can find a solution for you that would be affordable and effective. <clears throat> no, and that's so good because I, we were also talking before the show, I said, you know, I'm really skeptical when I, I see these things as seen on TV because, you know, there's this great, um, uh, there's always this great, don't spend this much, you can just buy this for $19.95 and it will be perfect and you'll be good. And uh, we've watched relatives, this is a joke in our house, we've watched relatives who've bought different things like that, and you know where they all, they all wind up in the kitchen drawer because they just flat don't necessarily work the way people hope they would work. And I, I have to ask you the question, you hear a lot about like over-the-counter amplifiers versus a prescription hearing aid, and I'm sure that must be a frustrating question for you because people must come and say, well, why would I spend this if I could just order this off of TV or, or go into this place and buy this over-the-counter? How do, you, how do you explain what the difference is? Well, uh, amplifiers or over-the-counter hearing devices are, are fine for people that, that have good hearing. Uh -huh. And, and they, they maybe want to be able to hear the television at a reduced volume level. Mm -hmm. Or hunters may want to hear animals scurrying about. Those are excellent devices for that. For people that have a real hearing loss, those will actually may be detrimental to their ability oh, to wow. hear. Uh, hearing losses are generally not even. In other words, you, you have more loss in the higher frequencies than in the lower frequencies. Mm -hmm. So if you, um, if, you, if you amplify everything equally, then the things that you really want to hear may not be amplified. Ah. Um, for instance, if you're in an automobile and everything is amplified equally, you're, you're just going to hear motor. the road noise and right. you won't be able to understand uh, your spouse in the, in the same okay. vehicle. That's, a, that's an example, uh, but uh, each hearing loss is unique and uh, may have different uh, solutions. So one of the things we talked about, you, you touched on this, uh, you said high frequency hearing loss is actually the most common type that, that I guess you, you're, you, you find that you're treating. Is that, expand on that or explain that a little bit? Yes, as our hearing declines, uh, for almost everybody, 90 to 95% mm -hmm. of people that experience hearing loss, uh, the, the decline is going to start in the high frequencies and work toward the lower frequencies. Um, the nature of the design of our cochlea, our inner ear, is, is uh, the cause for that. The, the part of the, the hair cells that are responsible for interpreting different pitches, the most vulnerable, are in the higher frequencies. Mm -hmm. However, just uh, having a high frequency hearing loss doesn't mean much until it's been examined and we know what the depths are and exactly which frequencies are most affected. Okay, and then the other thing that we hear a lot about is that 
is it tinnitus where you have like a ringing or a buzzing in your ears or? Yeah, tinnitus or tinnitus uh, can, uh, can be a ringing, a buzzing, a roaring, or a uh, chirping. There's a lot of different types of uh, oh, sounds wow. that people experience, but it's a subjective experience, so the person themselves can only hear it. Uh -huh. It may be inside of their head, or it may sound like it's coming from farther away, uh -huh. uh, but generally it is, uh, it's something that, um, that, that people with a hearing loss will experience more than people without a hearing loss, Okay, uh, and there may be a lot of different causes to it. Now, is that treatable when you have something like that? Uh, it, it may be. Um, for most people, uh, there's no, there's no uh, simple solution to tinnitus. Um, we know that uh, hearing aids will quite often reduce the, the effects of it, sometimes eliminate it. Um, but uh, there are no medications, there's, there's no pills, there's mm -hmm. no vitamins, there's, there's no product that's actually been developed that works better than a placebo. Uh, however, uh, we find that uh, about 80 or 90 percent of people with tinnitus do have a high frequency hearing loss uh -huh. and hearing aids will significantly reduce, in some cases will eliminate it while they're wearing their hearing aids. So once again, we're back to the what you need to do is call Palm Bay Hearing Aid Center and <clears throat> get yourself a free hearing check and get some expert advice as to what's really going on. Well, yeah, that's right. Um, if, if you're suddenly experiencing ringing in your ears or other noises in your ears, you first want to talk to your physician about it and, and then come in and see us and we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can do something for you. Not only are you board certified in, in uh, hearing aids and hearing technologies, but you also have a 30-year track record and experience of working with people. So I imagine you've seen the technology just zoom into, I remember asking you the question, is the hearing aids of today better than the hearing aids of 30 years ago? And it's probably something that makes you bust out laughing when you talk about it. But I wanted you to talk a little bit about, you know, iPhones, Bluetooth, all those things. Yeah, the hearing aids today are incredible for uh, the ability to um, eliminate the effects of background noise mm -hmm. and, to, uh, and to hear people speaking better. They do have the interaction with cell phones and uh, the Bluetooth, which is a, a very a, a nice convenience and a luxury to have. You can get hearing aids with or without it, but the, the main benefits have been in allowing people to put their hearing aids on and adapt to them quickly and have a genuine and significant improvement in their, in their life quality due to their ability to understand people better. So when we talk about having the ability to connect to your iPhone and things like that, what does that mean? That means like when you take your call, it's... Yeah, that means that uh, when your phone rings, you'll hear uh, a notification in your hearing aids, and you can wow. just begin talking to people. The receiver is built right into the hearing aids. Wow. So, you know, so you're you not have to having pick a... your phone up. Uh, wow. It can be 40 or 50 feet away from you, and you can still interact with it. That seems like it has some safety ramifications, too, because you're not going to yeah, have to right. hop up out of your chair and try to run over that's and right, figure right. out where you left your phone. That's right, or if you're driving, yeah. Yeah, or if you're driving. And then, too, right, because with the technology now, the, the, you're getting a superior experience in terms of the, what it's able to do for helping you. Well, yeah, that's the big improvement that we've seen in hearing aids. Um, your voice will sound natural. Before the, the recent advances in technology, people's voices sounded uh, almost objectionable with hearing devices. That was one of the biggest hurdles that we had mm -hmm. to overcome. But now their voice will sound natural. Hearing aids don't squeal. Yeah, I was going to ask you because I remember sometimes you say, "Oh, wait a second, and then somebody's fiddling with it, and then you hear that awful squealing, which but which is difficult for the person listening, but probably difficult for the person who is hearing that in their ear too, maybe. Yeah, that would be uh, that's quite an obnoxious sound to have right inside of your ear. Uh, but recent developments have uh, almost completely eliminated that in in most hearing losses. That's good. So if we're going to like kind of wrap this topic up, I, from all the things that you've described, there's so many things to be hopeful for that you can improve a situation if you have it, that it's uh, maybe even more cost effective than ever before. And possibly even your insurance may be more prone to be of value in resolving that. It seems like there's no downside to giving you guys a call and just coming in to get to get to get an exam. Well, if there's one message that people get out of this is that, uh, that there's no charge to come in and talk to us and uh, find out if you may have a problem or if your problem can be improved. So if people want to get in touch with Palm Bay Hearing Aid Center, how do they do it? I know we covered it once before, but if somebody just tuned in late, let's give them the phone number. Uh, yeah, they can call us at 321 
369-9900. And for those of you who are grabbing a pencil as we're talking about this one more time. <laughs> 321-369-9900. And you have a great website. I was actually looking at it before we uh, recorded the show yesterday. You have a lot, there's a lot of resources there. I saw that you have um, like a whole tab that has, looks to me like has articles and videos or things that you... Yeah, that's right. If they come to our website, then they, they can get quite a bit of information and referrals right there. And the website is? PalmBayHearingAids.com. So PalmBayHearingAids.com. Well, thank you, uh, John Roberts, for being with us on today. It's really, uh, really been a, 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 an interesting and good dialogue about all the things related to hearing. And thank you, viewer, for joining us today. And I hope this has been helpful for you as well. And make an appointment now. Call and get your ears checked. I'm Kerry Fink for Helping Seniors TV. I'm Joe Steckler, president of Helping Seniors of Brevard. I need your help to tell me the most important issues that our advocacy group can focus on for you that will help seniors. The survey form is on our website, helpingseniorsofbrevard.org, or look for our survey of Senior Scene Magazine. Questions or more info? As always, you can call our information hotline at 321-473-7770. That's 321-473-7770. We'd love to hear from you. Helping Seniors, Upper Vard. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Mandisi, and I'm proud to be associated with Helping Seniors, Upper Vard. I really admire the work that uh, Joe Steckler's been doing. His heart is all in. He has put his, his, it's been his life mission for the past many years to, to help seniors in this, in this community. So if this is the type of thing that the seniors have a nice hotline that they can call, if they need an expert in any field, in the medical field, in the legal field, um, transportation, housing, uh, it certainly has been a whirlwind of information for these people, as well as it's a nice educational tool, be it through their uh, website, through the, uh, the radio shows, as well as some TV programs that have been filmed, which uh, I have been given the pleasure of doing a few myself. So I will say that I appreciate the fact that we have such an awesome organization helping seniors here. I'm Joe Stackler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Brevard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You are always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.